Good morning, everybody, and welcome uh, to worship uh, this morning as uh, we uh, gather together online again. We were hoping to be able to live stream on uh, YouTube uh, as well as Facebook this morning. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be working right now. I would need to um, try and see if we can uh, improve that uh, for next week so that we can be on YouTube as well as Facebook. Um, we welcome you, uh, as I say, to worship this morning, uh, and uh, we we hope and pray that as as you join us, as you share uh, in this time uh, with us, that you will uh, uh, feel the closeness of God uh, yourself, uh, and that you will uh, uh, feel connected to all that is uh, going on online this morning. As we come to worship, just uh, just want to us to turn to Psalm one hundred and fifteen and verse one. Psalm 115 and verse 1. And uh, we read these words there. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory for the sake of your steadfast love and your faithfulness. And this morning, as, as we think about that, as, as we gather together, as we, as we join in uh, in this way to worship God this morning, we're, we're reminded uh, in, in this uh, psalm, uh, it's a call to give God glory. Uh, and we're reminded it's, it's not about us, it's not about our circumstances, but it's all about who God is. And that's why we come and we gather uh, on a Sunday morning in in even in this way in in these days uh, we we gather together to give god glory and not ourselves and psalm 42 um uh, uh, verse 11 uh, isaiah uh, so sorry isaiah 42 verse 11 isaiah when when he's thinking uh, of god he, he says this that the desert and its cities lift up their voice uh the the villages of Keda in uh the villages that Keda inhabits, let the inhabitants of Seleg sing for joy, let them shout from the top of the mountains. Again, this idea that as we gather, uh, everything gathers to praise God. And, and Jesus, remember, says that even the stones will cry out uh, in praise. Uh, if we are silent, uh, because God has created the whole earth, uh, the, the whole universe, and he's created everything we see, everything we know. And if we are silent, then things will start to cry out because God uh, is worthy of, of praise. It's also a call to have a right, res uh, right perspective of, uh, as I say, of who God is. Uh, it's... Uh, God is the creator. God is the one who sustains everything. God is our redeemer, our rock, our fortress. Uh, and so we give God glory. Again, Isaiah in chapter 48, verse 11 says, uh, For my own sake, I, I do it. This is God talking. For my own sake, I do it. For how should my name be profaned? My glory I will not give to another. So again, God is the one who is worthy of praise, not us. It's also a call uh, this morning to have a right perspective of who we are. It, we, it's okay having a good perspective of who God is, a right perspective of who God is. But we also need to have a right perspective of who we are. And in Romans chapter 3 verse 23, we're reminded that all have sinned and fall short, to the, shall, and fall short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And so therefore we, we come as penitent uh, people before a holy, glorious God. And from this perspective of God, right perspective of who God is, a right perspective of who we are, we from this we worship God, the God who gives us life, the God who gives us new life, in Christ Jesus and so we come this morning and we worship him together uh, even though we are physically apart right now we come together and we worship the God who is worthy of praise let's pray before we sing together to God be the glory Lord God uh, we uh, come to you this morning and we do we we thank you Lord that you are God we thank you Lord that you are the creator and the preserver of all things uh, Lord that you you draw us to yourself this morning 
I thank you, Lord, that uh, even though we are sinners, even though we fall short of your glory, even though we fall short of what you created us to be in so many ways, Lord, you still call us and you still, and you redeem us. Uh, and Lord, that you uh, allow us into your presence to worship you this morning. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will accept our offering of praise, our offering of worship, our offering of lifting up your name uh, and giving you the glory. Uh, this day, for this new day, Lord, that we share together. Uh, in your name, Lord, I pray. Amen. We're going to sing uh, together just now. To God be the glory. Thank you for singing uh, with us uh, the, that uh, great old hymn, uh, To God Be The Glory. And um, we, we do uh, give God the glory uh, this morning because he has redeemed us. He has called us to be his uh, people. I'm going to hand over to Noel just now as he uh, brings us uh, the message uh, for today. Uh, so I'm just going to hand over to Noel. Good morning again and welcome to the Sunday service here in Albrigan. We want to extend a welcome to anyone that's listening in 
that uh, that God would bless your heart. It's great to know that that people listen to the word of God. And today we want to bring this great message of hope in a world that's talking about hopeless situations. And again, through my own experience, especially in the past six months, people saying, where is God and who is God and what did Jesus, why doesn't Jesus do this and that and the other? And at the same time, the course and square would use in Jesus' name. But if you're asked the question, what do you think of Jesus? What comes to your mind when you hear about Jesus Christ? Do you think of him as your Lord and Savior? Do you not think of him at all, maybe? And a lot of people don't think of Jesus. But why Jesus Christ is so important? in our life and in anyone's life and everyone's life is because he's the Savior. And I'm going to read a verse and think about it. It's Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. And listen to the word of God and see what you think. This is what Paul wrote. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Salvation is found in no one else. And if you're reading it in context, he's talking about Jesus Christ. Salvation is found in no one else. And for people again have said to me, what do you mean by salvation? It's mean being saved. You need it. Jesus is called a saviour, you have to save, and he saved you from something. And later on we'll go through it a little better. But we're on our way, heading one direction, and Jesus wants to bring us the opposite way. Salvation is found in no one else, because there is no other name. No other name under heaven given the man by which we must be saved. That great verse, Andela, our old friend, Love that I am the way, Jesus said. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but by me. Nobody. Only one way. Jesus is that way. Returning our book of Acts again, turn over to chapter 16, verse 31. And again, it's Paul speaking. And the situation is he was in prison with Paul and Silas in prison and suddenly there was it says a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken at once all the prison doors flew open and everybody's chains fell off the jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open he threw his sword he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped but Paul shouted don't harm yourself we're all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sir, what must we do to be safe? And what a question. In a place that he had the power and authority and suddenly everything was changed. Paul and Silas were in the prison and were singing praising God. The earthquake and everything opened. But they didn't run away. Paul said there, the man was going to kill himself because he knew what he was going to be killed had prisoners escaped. And Paul was aware of that. So he didn't run away. And then he asked that great question, what must I do to be saved? A man asked me that about two weeks ago. And uh, this is what you have to do. They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Believe in the Lord Jesus. It's as simple as that, as clear as that, believing on the Lord Jesus. And even though we often talk about doctrines and theology and all this stuff, the rock and the foundation of the gospel is believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, that Jesus was born he walked his earth, he preached the word, he died and rose again for the sin of mankind. If you turn over with me to the book of Peter, and it's towards the back, 
and I know people are not as they're using phones and everything nowadays. Good for them. But for one Peter chapter one, verse eighteen, and it reads, "For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers." But with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. And again, it's telling us clearly, you cannot save yourself. You cannot save yourself with your gold or your silver or your works or anything else for that matter. You need a savior. And Peter writes, you are saved with the precious blood of Jesus, a lamb without blemish. That's how we're saved. The precious blood of Jesus Christ. A little later on, he says in verse 23, For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all men are like grass, and all the glory is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower falls, but the word of God stands forever. Save with the precious blood and it brings you right back to Calvary. As Jesus hung on a cross, he looked on man and he loved us. He shed his blood for the sin of man. The righteous for the unrighteous. And why do we need the Savior? And it's, it's it, you know, because as I've talked to people, they're starting from the wrong point, and we often do ourselves as Christians, we often don't tell people what the Word of God says. Most people often talk about good other people that they know there, there, there is some good people in the world, and there's this type of person, they're fairly good. But see, the Word of God starts from a complete different place. The Word of God in the book of Romans, chapter 3, 10, reads, There is no one righteous, not even one. No one. That's why we need a Savior. There is none righteous, not one. Read on, Rashad. Time. But a little later on in chapter 3 again of Romans 23, it says, For all have sinned and fall short the glory of God. I'm a sinner, saved by grace, thank God. I didn't even know, I thought I was one of those people that was all right, good enough, not too bad. You ever hear those days here in Ireland, this we do all stuff. Ireland, he's not too bad. Jesus says you're a sinner. You need a savior. For all have sinned. All have sinned. That's everyone. Come short to glory of God. But you see, that's the beauty of it, because Jesus came to save sinners. He didn't come to save good people because there are many. Jesus loves the sinner. That's why he came to save us. Turn to Romans chapter 6. 23. And I'm going back because these are these are verses that when I became a Christian way back 30 odd years ago, a little more, these are the words that caught my heart. They set me on the path of righteousness. They brought me into God's kingdom. Understanding I was the sinner and Jesus the Savior. Getting together was the best thing that ever happened to me, coming to Jesus and saying, asking Jesus to save me. And he did. God. But in Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death. You work for a wage, you get paid. The wages of sin for sinners, and what we get paid is death, eternal separation from God. But there's an end there, that verse. The beauty of that verse says, But the gift of God. Is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
here it is. There's the love of God reaching out to the sinner. We earn death. God gives us eternal life. What a saviour. What, what a love God has for us. Why do we draw back? How do we listen to people arguing over God, you know, and why? People say, why doesn't God do something about the pandemic? God has done something about everything. Tell you the same. And whether we're worried about the pandemic, and it is a worry for a lot of people. The thing is, as I've said to so many in the latter weeks and months, we're going to die anyway. Of something. Where are you going? It's going to get clear. Where are you going? Gone, and there's only two destinations. Even though we try to make up, there might be a third one, there isn't. There's only heaven and hell. And Jesus talks about it on the Sermon on the Mount. He talks about the narrow way and the broad way. And he describes to enter in at the narrow way and strive to enter in Matthew and in the Sermon on the Mount. Strive to enter in, and then he talks few that find it. Then he talks about the broad way that leads to destruction, and many are on it. And Jesus says, The narrow way, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but me. Salvation is in no one else, no other name. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you'll be saved. Believe in him. You know, God came to set us free, free from fear, free to live a life. Bring glory to his name. Touch your heart, let Jesus touch your heart now. Let Jesus talk to your heart. Close your eyes, think, think of Jesus was sitting in front of you, not me, not me, not me, Jesus talking to you. If you turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 1, and I'm forever drawn to the Gospel of John because there's so much of Jesus talking himself. And he's telling us all kinds of things, beautiful things. He's demonstrating his beautiful love towards us. He's reaching out and he's saying, come to me. He's reaching out to people left, right and centre and says, what will you have me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? Jesus, our Saviour, the man of great compassion, the man that was rejected and nailed to a cross. And he's done freely for us. Ah, if we could only grasp it, some things we're, we're so busy in this world and so busy arguing and fighting and so busy grabbing our own our own self-righteousness we forget to bow at the foot of the Saviour in the Gospel of John chapter 1 and verse 29 as John the Baptist John the Baptist was one of the great men of God, but he said he wasn't fit to tie the, the laces of Jesus' sandals. There's comparison. He knew. John the Baptist knew that he needed Jesus. Jesus was the Savior. He was the sinner. Servant of God. But in comparison, there wasn't any. He wasn't fit to tie his shoelaces. But Jesus turns it the other way and reaches out with love. He calls us his son. He calls us heirs to the throne. But in John chapter 1 verse 29, it says, The next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And I don't know where you're at in your own heart. and Maybe you're very worried about certain things. Maybe life is not good, and maybe your health is not good. And maybe it's to the way around, you're doing really well, and you're kind of thinking, What do I do? What do I need Jesus? You didn't need him. Either right or either way. 
how Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And that's our Savior. And that's think on those things, think on, on John the Baptist seeing Jesus to say the Lamb of God. And you connect him back with the Passover lamb and all the sacrifices we offered for sin that couldn't take them away. Here's the Lamb of God, and He takes away the sin of the world, and He takes it away in His shed blood, and wipes it clean. And on the cross, as He hung, He said to us, He said to you, and He said to me, and anyone that will listen, it's finished. I paid the price for ransom, Jesus, the Son of God, hanging on the cross. In verse 34, same chapter of verse 1, or chapter 1, he says the same thing. The Lamb of God. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, look, the Lamb of God. And as I speak to you tonight, I say to you again, Look, look to Jesus. And all the talk is argued round and rings. Look to Jesus. He's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Staggering thought. Because that includes my sin, your sin, and everyone else's sin. And the solution today is as people talk say all kinds of things. The solution of the day, whether it's the pandemic or anything else, in our messed up world, is repentance. And people mix that up. Repentance has nothing but to do with penance. It's returning, turning to God. John Newton, the great writer of, of, of so many hymns, and the great life he, he led after being a slave trader, as he neared his end, he said, he was asked about God and, and things. He said, I know two things. Two things I'll never forget. One is, he said, that I am a great sinner. And the other thing is that Jesus is a great Savior. You see, the two in the room. That's all we need in the room. Me the sinner, and Jesus the Savior. And it's his love. His love. And read it in John 3 16 and everybody knows it and yet probably know most of the got it it's often the familiar passages that we go fly through and forget don't hear them so this evening as we come before Jesus and we've talked about the Savior and the Lamb of God and his great love for us let's read it John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. There it is. For God so loved the world he gave. You see, the difference between us and God is pretty obvious, even though we try to cover it up. God is a giver, we're a grasper. We take. We're always looking for taking. We're always building something round about us. We're always grabbing and taking. And yet, many will say that we give this, we give, yeah, we give out our abundance. God gave it all. He gave his only son. And Jesus was willing. Jesus was willing. There's love. Love broad as an ocean. Vast as an ocean, that's the song. Lou used to love that song. Here is love vast as an ocean. And it is. And it's there. He loved the world. And that's everyone in it. That he gave his only son. That whosoever believes in him shall not perish. People talk about eternal life. And people say you can't know you have it. Jesus just after saying it. Shall not perish. But have eternal life. No ifs and ands and buts about it. Jesus just said it. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. Jesus spoke it. 
good enough for me. People say, sometimes you can't explain things. But what Jesus said is good enough. There it is written, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. It's good enough for you. That's what he said. But as you read on, there's another bit that he says. trying to find it now, I lost my way here. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because he, he has not believed in the name of God, one and only Son. Here is a verdict. Light has come into the world, and men love darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. You see the contrast then. If you believe in Jesus, why wouldn't you? What have you to lose? Everything to gain. It's given free. But if you don't, if you reject him, there's an answer. You perish. That's what it says. Jesus came to save and seek that which is lost. If you perish and you're lost, you rejected God's word. You rejected his son. Remember as a Christian, the night I got saved, and I remember it so clearly, um, and I've said it so often, I, I have to always go back to, do you remember when you got saved? Do you remember when God, you met God? And the great thing was, people always say, um, seeking God, and, and, and I found God. I didn't find God. God found me. Because I didn't go looking for him anyway. I hadn't, um, I, I, didn't, I thought it was okay. I thought it was okay. Burning my wife now was at the time marrying her sister or going to a Bible study. And I said I'd go along just to see, you know, this is 30 odd year, 34, 5, 84. So you work it out for yourself. It's 36 years ago in April. And I went along to see what all right. Our country was a different country back then. And I just went to see what okay, what was going on? What was this? Another religion or something. And Bernie had bought me a Bible. And I did believe in Jesus, but I, I was supposed to just believe in Jesus. Yeah, but I had the need to might pray to him as a sovereign danger, but I didn't believe. But I'd gone along to see what was going on. And what was going on changed my life. Because Jesus found me. And it, it always staggers me and I think about it. And it's it, Amazing when God touches your heart. And the words were shown to me that night by Pastor Danny Hill. It's in his home. I never met the man before in my life. And he showed me these verses that have stuck with me ever since, and I'm still always astonished. And the words read it's Ephesians 2 8 and 9. For by grace you've been saved through faith, and not of yourself, it's the gift of God. Not by works, which any man should boast. Again, it's by grace. And I often thought about the grace of God that passes all understanding. And he said, For by grace he is saved through faith, not of yourself. You can't save yourself. Cannot save yourself. Remember the word said, none righteous, no, not one. For all the sin that come short the glory of God. The wages of sin is dead. And then the gift of God is eternal life. And here, as Danny showed me that night, grace you've been saved through faith and not of yourself. It's the gift of God. Never knew and I never I, I, I I never heard it. I always thought that you kind of had to walk your way, hope for the best, and you know, you, you're not too bad. And then Jesus said, No, you are too bad. No, I've come to save you for grace. I've come to save you because I died for you and I love you, as I do everybody else. And that night on those verses, I got saved. If you, if you get a chance to turn back again, to the, verses that he showed me, Isaiah 
118. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. It's no King James. And God says, Come over now and sit with me. Let us reason this thing out. And he did. Thank God I said, I remember going home and I remember being amazed at what I heard and what I believed. And I said, This is great. And then I told a friend of mine the next day, he thought I'd lost my mind. In one sense, I had, I'd lost my mind to Jesus, the heart. And ever since I've been saved by this wonderful grace and my faith that God gave me to believe. God reached and wants to reach out to you. And I don't know whether you're saved, you're in the church for a long time, or in some church, or you're going to church or listening. It doesn't matter to Christ. Jesus loves you. And he's reaching you today. He's talking to you today. He's talking to you now. He's telling you to come. He's telling you it's free. I'm giving you eternal life free. I'm offering it to you. And if you're in the book of John, and we look at all this type of stuff. If you turn over to John chapter 10, 10, 11, 12, all those chapters. But in chapter 10 of John, Jesus says, I am the gate, verse 9 of chapter 10. Whoever comes through me will be saved. He will come and go out and find pasture. The thief comes to steal kill and destroy. I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly and more full. And then he says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. And you see again the thief. Who's the thief? Look around you. Who's trying to rob you? Who's trying to take everything you have? Why do we lock doors, lock gates, lock everything? We have them or watching, we think people are going to rob you. Robbing the online, I don't know much about these. To rob you, you leave and it's gone. You're walking and people won't pay you properly. The thief. To rob, to steal, and destroy. Discourage. And many people here tonight or today are discouraged. Jesus said. To give you life and give it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. And again, in our own world today, in Ireland anyway, love that people don't understand shepherds and sheep. We're sheep because it's the shepherd. Now, if you know anything about sheep, they're not the most intelligent of animals. They're completely harmless animals, they cannot defend themselves at all. And that's why they need the shepherd to watch over them. And Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. They know, and they listen to my voice. Picture yourself as a sheep, and I know it can be hard, because we think, well, how could you think that? Well, way about that. We're not in God's days. We are exactly like sheep. I tell you, Google sheep, and look at what they do, and how they live. And they're completely harmless in one sense, and yet, Everything attacks them, unless there's someone there to mind them. Jesus is the Jesus is where his sheep. And he's the good shepherd. And he watches over us. And he cares for us. The thief comes to rob the sting and destroy. Come to Jesus now. He tells us earlier on in, in chapter 10. The watchman opened the gate for him, and the sheep listened to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Do you hear him? Do you hear him? Do you hear his voice? Can you see him in your heart? Jesus has come. Come on. What's wrong with us? How can we reject such a Savior? How can we wander off like his sheep? wander into ditches and wander out and we all over the place and never find a way back home. But Jesus comes along. Oh, what a saviour. We need to we need to get it in our own heart and we need to tell people. Share the gospel with people. In John ten he 
he's talking to the people again in verse 25 he says Jesus answered I did tell you but you do not believe the miracles I do in my father's name speak to me but you do not believe because you are not my sheep my sheep listen to my voice I know them and they follow me and listen I give them eternal life and they shall never perish no one can snatch them out of my hand my father has given them to me is greater than all and no one can snatch them out of my father's hand I and the father are one my sheep listen to my voice I give them eternal life and here again they shall never perish and no one and no one can snatch them out of my hand they are in the hand of Jesus when people say you can't know on Jesus just read it again. Remember, God says, God so loved the world, never perish. Here he says it again My sheep hear my voice, I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Why? Turn to John 14. And here again, this is Della, or I hope she might be able, it might get, get to listen to here, because she loved this. And she loved her Savior, and she still does. And God has left her around here for 94 years because she's a witness and always has been, and I'm sure she still is. It says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. That I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm and that's why you'll never perish because Jesus has gone to prepare a place for you that where you are, where he is, you'll be there also. And me. Let your heart not be troubled. This world is temporary. COVID or no COVID, most of us will die. Go to that place prepared for Jesus. This is the message we need to tell people. The great hope. The hope of going to heaven. And Jesus says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. I'm going to where I am doing we also. And then we look at Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know the way where you're going. How can we know the way? Thomas, one of the apostles. Don't know, Lord. What? Don't know the way. Don't know where you're going. You know. And Jesus said, I am the way. The truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except me. Read these verses. Read them slowly. Stay with them. Let God speak to your heart. Let God reach to your heart. I am the way, Jesus says. I am the way. And just as we finish up while we're in John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. He says there, I am the way. Turn back to John 11. John 11, 25. And he's talking to Martha. What a story. Read the story, Lazarus. It's about Lazarus being risen from the dead. But it's also about Martha and Mary. And it's definitely complete with Christ. And in 11... 26, Martha answered, Jesus had said to her in 20, 25, 23, Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. He died four, years de four days dead. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And listen to our Saviour. Listen to him, he speaks to you and he's speaking to me. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies and whoever lives and believes in me will never die do you believe this yes lord she said i am the resurrection do you believe that he will die jesus is the resurrection jesus is the way jesus is the good shepherd jesus is the door into his life i am the way and just a little 
chapter 15, verse 1, Jesus said, I am the true vine. I am the true vine. And again, broken out of the landscape and the garden, and the Lord Father of the garden, and I understand the vine. Did you read it? The beauty of it. Because if I cut a branch off, the vine's gone, it dies. But you're attached to the vine. And as we read these words, and we, as, as a small moment in time, Bow your heads, bow your hearts, we pray now, meditate back on it. No salvation in anybody else. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Why do we need a saviour? Because we're sinners, no righteous, no not one. All have sinned. And what you get paid for your sin is the wages of sin is debt, eternal damnation. But the gift of God. Someone interceded for us. Jesus interceded. Died on the cross. Shed his blood. Paid the ransom and said, The gift of God. Eternal life. What a saviour. Gone to prepare a place for his people. Jesus said, You'll never perish. I'll give you eternal life. You can say, Yeah. Jesus said, You'll never perish. I'll give you eternal life. Of course you can know. Jesus tells us you've gone to a better place for us. So where he is, we will be there also. And then if you just didn't know the way, like Thomas, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection. I am the good shepherd. Let's pray. Father, your word, even as I speak about it and read it, is just beyond maybe belief in one sense, because we're so foolish. We don't ever believe we can get something for nothing in this world. But you tell us you give us the greatest thing of all, eternal life, through your Son, Jesus Christ. And help us to think on that. Because we can say it so easily and it's gone out of our head and we're arguing about something completely different. There is no, no argument with Jesus. Let us come and thank you. Bow before you. And I think that the, the, the Pharisee and the publican, and the publican prayed, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. That's why my prayer is today, Jesus, I am the sinner. And be merciful. And let other people come be merciful. And you are. The confessor saying, you're big, but you forgive. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus, to understand you, to understand your great love. And to thank you. And I do. And as I leave, leave, Lord, and as we go in different ways and people are in, in their own homes and here, there, and everywhere because of this COVID, it doesn't matter, you know them. You know each and every one of them. And you love. Here is love, vast as an ocean. It springs to mind Lou as a Thomas, you know. She has a, a beautiful Lou as her friendship and her, her, her love for you is radiated to everyone and, me, and definitely to me has helped me in a walk with you and you send these people you send people into our lives to help us and as we gather together and we pray we pray as a unit in one sense separately and but in our heart I pray for your church and your bringing and the many people and friends I can't see and haven't seen and I pray for the pastor James and I pray for Nancy and the family bless them and I thank you for them and what they're doing and what they've done and encourage their hearts and help them connect. But the rest that we need to draw together, it's not a one-man band kind of thing. It's a body in Christ, lifted up and glorified in your name. And as we walk in the light, as you're in the light, people will see. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Morning again and welcome. Thank you, uh, Noel, uh, for that message uh, this morning. Uh, just reminding us that uh, um, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and that we are uh, we are redeemed. We are given new life. 
through Christ as we come before him and as we know it at the beginning of our service have a true perspective of who we are that we are sinners and that we need a saviour and Jesus is our saviour thank you Noel uh, this morning we're going to sing together before we uh, uh, share the announcements uh, and benediction uh, together as, as we close. Uh, we're going to uh, sing uh, Blessing and Honour. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, singing uh, with us uh, this uh, morning there. Uh, great, great song. Uh, before we share in the benediction together, uh, just a couple of announcements uh, for you. First of all, uh, we're going to try uh, Facebook Rooms again after the services. So give us about 10 minutes uh, to log uh, to uh, get that up and running uh, it should be the same code as last week uh, so if you joined in last week uh, the same uh, the same um, uh, link should should bring you on it's the same room so uh, so, so that should be fine if, if you need to receive uh, the link again uh, just send me a text uh, and I can I can pass that on to you uh, no problem uh, it's also on our um, uh, a newsletter uh, via email again if, if you uh, haven't received that and you'd like to uh, email us at babriganbaptist at gmail.com and we will be able to uh, add you on to our mailing list uh, for that as well we also currently have um, uh, the UCB uh, word for today and uh, the Our Daily Bread. We have a couple of the Our Daily Bread left and UCB uh, as well. Uh, so if you'd like them, let me know and we can post them out uh, to you uh, uh, in the days ahead uh, so that you can uh, 
aid your own uh, devotion, your own Bible study, your own uh, prayer time uh, with, with that. On Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, the 3rd of November, uh, we will, at 8 o'clock on Zoom, we will have our Bible study. Again, the uh, login details are in our newsletter for that. If uh, you if you want to uh, to text me, if, if you need to, uh, to get to that as well, please do. Uh, and then next Sunday at... Uh, at eight at ten thirty, sorry, on um, Facebook and hopefully on YouTube. We were hoping to be able to uh, go live on YouTube as well. Uh, so there was a technical issue there this morning. We will try and sort that out for next week. Uh, so at ten thirty uh, next week for our live stream worship, and at eight o'clock we have our prayer meeting followed by our uh, followed by uh, communion. That's uh, Sunday the eighth of November. So that's next Sunday. Uh, just to remind you that that will be taking uh, place. So this, uh, so I thank you uh, for for uh, sharing in worship with you uh, with us this morning. I just want to leave you a few words of scripture uh, as as we close our time together uh, just now. And uh, I'm reading from Romans chapter eight, verses one and two. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. Amen. Thank you.